hi everyone thanks a lot for joining i hope all of you are staying safe and doing good good morning good afternoon and good evening from wherever you are joining us today it's great to be with you today and be a part of the first ever mct submit in sri lanka kudos to the organizers for having this event in a great manner during these hard times right uh, since i was a former mvp and mct i know how much effort you need to put in running these community events before i dive into the topic let me go ahead and introduce myself i am sajidharan people call me as saji working as a cloud solution architect at microsoft closely working with independent software vendors in the apac region to build uh, solutions with microsoft azure and related technologies i am passionate around the areas of app development containers and open source uh, feel free to reach out to me using the social handles which are displayed in the slide i know um, you have a lot of content to gather within two days from the speakers and experts in this session for the next 30 minutes i am really excited to take you through about one of the important topic around cloud native and talk a little more about containerization with kubernetes on azure and how to containerize and run machine learning models with containers for your application hope we are having mixed participants today let me try to uh, cover the session applicable for everyone right in this discussion i will start with what is cloud native and why it is important these days and then i will talk about few container offerings on azure that you can choose to host your applications on azure such as container instances and azure kubernetes service i will also cover a little about how to add machine learning capabilities to your application by containerizing the model and orchestrate the entire ecosystem using a container orchestrator like kubernetes finally i will be showing a short demo by containerizing an existing machine learning model with kubernetes cluster with that let's get started every one of you must be hearing this word cloud native on a daily basis right if you are a if you are a developer building an application and publishing on cloud uh, for an application to be termed as cloud native, it has to be built in such a way that it can operate on any type of cloud using the methods uh, which are very specific to the cloud, right? Cloud native is really beneficial to organization and developers. Uh, it gives an architecture that can be, you know, fit into any environment that takes fully advantage of the distributed scalable nature of the cloud. Uh, to maximize your focus on writing code, and also it creates a business value and keeping your customers happy. So if you look at cloud native, it is basically about three things, right? The first one is about building APIs, which denotes exposing services as lightweight APIs for easy integration for others as well as within your organization. And then it talks about packaging, packaging your application as containers, which is an architectural approach for developing application as a collection of modular or loosely coupled uh, services it is about building microservices which explains the architecture about having chunks of modules by separating the logic and finally the agility which is more important in any software industry right which talks about devops which is about people process and technology that promotes a collaboration environment and also it makes you to build the applications quicker and faster to the market so if you look at Gartner analysis, Gartner claims by 2021, more than 50 percentage of the enterprise applications uh, or the mission critical applications will be running as containers in production. And 60 percentage of the backend developers are considering containers as a way to deploy the application. So containers are the next phase of modernist applications because there is a tremendous growth and large companies are adopting you know and the enterprises are really talking about that uh, if you talk about cloud native there are key component that uh, comes as a part of uh, cloud native first one is the container a container is a lightweight standalone executable package or a piece of software that includes everything that you need to run uh, which has you know code runtime system tools system libraries and settings uh, since the announcement of Docker back in 2010, most of the organization and developers adopted as adopted to containers in large manner. It offers a way to package your application and run it portably in any environment in consistent way. Second one is serverless, which is one of my favorite area, which offers a way to scale your applications where you don't have to worry about the underlying infrastructure. 
uh, which provides a lot of business values for developers as well as as a company and the final one is the kubernetes which is a platform to manage and scale applications which are made of containers so it acts as an orchestrator uh, to run your application in the way you need and scale them accordingly whenever there is a demand let's talk about the offerings around containers i am sure that uh, this is the most favorite topic among developers in general containers benefits can be seen from two perspectives right one is for developers and the other one is for operations team so with containers developers will be able to build features in quick time with agile manner which gives a head start in uh, developing containers by utilizing the existing uh, ready-made boilerplate images so that you can ship your application to production environment in exactly the same way uh, it is behaving in your development environment or any other environment. So uh, containers are quite cost effective since uh, they don't require a separate operating system and containers are uh, always used, uh, containers always use less resources, right? It also offers the portability of horizontal scaling, uh, meaning that you can add more identical containers within a cluster and scale based on the demand that you are getting from your end users so there are a lot more benefits which i would cover in the upcoming slides in general it offers benefits for developers as well as you know uh, the operations team when you see from customers perspective you know kubernetes really emerged as a leading orchestrator across the industry there are many reasons for this right it offers portability across uh, different environments such as on-prem and the cloud it is extensible because the whole system including the tooling how you can orchestrate things how you can deploy things it's built up around kubernetes so all sort of cloud native compute operations such as how do you log aggregations how do you do the distributed tracing and whenever you need to operate with uh, distributed applications at a scale uh, you can start with Kubernetes. So that is very important for developers as well as uh, customers. Next, when it comes to self-healing with distributed uh, systems, uh, you need to really embrace and have in mind that uh, part of the system can fail at any time, right? It's about making sure that the orchestrator has a great self-healing features such as uh, you know auto-scaling and auto-replacement and all this becomes an important part of your application lifecycle, right? How do you handle customers and how do you get rid of the issues uh, when it's happening in production environment and how to have the switch over in quick time so that you can serve your customers more faster. So when you talk about Kubernetes, different cloud providers offers different uh, way to, you know, have their managed environment. In Azure, we are providing something called Azure Kubernetes Service. So it can be called as AKS as well in short term. So it is simplifying the deployment management and the operations of Kubernetes. A lot of uh, things that service is offering, right? Uh, you don't have to worry about how to uh scale things up and you don't have to worry about how to set up CI/CD pipeline because it comes with a really tight integrated security integration such as azure active directory and also you we are providing a managed identity with pods uh, and you get the whole ecosystem of open source tooling around kubernetes so if you're considering kubernetes as a way to deploy your applications aks offers all these benefits starting from deployment and management ending with you know the open source toolings which are provided or built around kubernetes okay that's an overview of aks and how aks works on azure let's dive into some of the top scenarios that developers uh, could use uh, Kubernetes on Azure. In general, we have seen the first one is around lifting and shifting workloads to containers. And this is really around cost saving, you know, and also the desire to migrate uh, workloads from on-prem to cloud. The next is very famous amongst developers. It's around microservices. So whenever developers want to have control on what they want to build, uh, Kubernetes is well suited to a support with service discovery. And also uh, it offers a way to containerize your application to move fast. So uh, microservices is a great offering and developers are moving towards having their microservices deployed on a Kubernetes environment. Third is the important topic, which I will be covering today machine learning models and training on large environments like Kubernetes. 
is a great scenario for having your application deployed on Kubernetes. And the fourth one is IoT. It's also pretty big and a lot of customers we have seen uh, success running IoT on Kubernetes because the portability is one of the important aspect that shows, uh, you know, Kubernetes can work on different environment in different edge locations, as well as environments which are very small on any device. On the side of machine learning, what we are seeing is that Azure Community Service is ideal for data scientists who are building solutions for complex scenarios. So we have seen a lot of public discussions on how you know, things like OpenAI is using Kubernetes on Azure to accelerate their business, uh, which is really cutting edge, right? And also in the space of model training, even if you are using open source tools such as TensorFlow, AKA supports being able to have that pool of nodes levering, leveraging the heavy GPUs uh, accelerations part. So you can run any type of workloads uh, which deals with machine learning models using uh, AKS. The next service is really important if you're considering uh, running small workloads. So Azure Container Instances is a solution for scenario that can be operated in isolated containers, including uh, simple applications, dealing with task automations and uh, building jobs. So, um, so to give an example, the virtual machine would sit idle for most of the time, right? If you are deploying applications on virtual machine, it might be sitting idle for a long time. So despite costing more for continuously running containers. Azure Container Instances can save a lot of money compared to the virtual machine. So this is very common when you are developing software to run uh, short-lived experiments, right? So if you want to get a test of uh, instance or something uh, running in the cloud, with ACI, you can quickly spin up containers, do your testing and delete it whenever you are done. And here you will ha have to pay only for the few hours of usage. So you can say that Azure Container Instances might not be uh, right fit for every type of containerist workloads, but uh, they can be the best option when you need to run short-lived containers to handle occasional spikes, right? Uh, when you're dealing with high bursts of additional work. This is another great offering when you are running containerist workloads on Azure. So I talked about different containerized workloads on Azure. Let's move on to the second part where I will be covering the AI services in Azure, right? AI services in Azure brings the best of AI to Azure as well as best of Azure to AI. It's about bringing the state of art of technology, which is very easy to use uh, in terms of developers as well as citizen developers. It's about taking advantage of the best capabilities that Azure has to offer, such as hardware and microservice clusters to make the AI scalable in the way you need. So if you look at Microsoft uh, offerings on AI, there are three sets of AI services which are available. The first, which is a pre-built AI capability, such as cognitive services, which, which is around 25 services, APIs for speech, language understanding, vision, and uh, search are simple. Uh, cloud hosted functions, right? Second is the conversational AI. Uh, now you can build conversational AI with Azure Bot Service. It allows you to build and deploy chat conversational applications with ease. Third, when you have to deploy and build a deeply custom AI model with your own data, Azure Machine Learning provides all you need for cloud a scale algorithm and a model development. So these are the three types of sets of services uh, that a Azure offer in general. When I talk about cognitive services, there are different services available, which is around 25 services. You can explore by navigating to our Azure website. And these services are available as containers starting from sentimental analysis to language detection. Using these containers, you can integrate either on-prem or on Azure. Uh, you know that these containers behave exactly as how you are running on local environment. And these are already thoroughly tested APIs by Microsoft. So you know that you have the reliability to run in production. You don't have to spend much time on doing the test or checking the accuracy. Uh, you can just start to consume and uh, you know add capabilities to your application in the way you need. Let's talk a little more about what are the common customer pain points or the 
uh, use a pain points that you talk about artificial intelligence. I believe most of you and your customers have encountered the following pain points, like you are unable to load the entire data into the cloud, right? Because your stored data could be hundreds of terabytes, uh, which is not convenient to rebuild the storage in cloud. Uh, more seriously, uh, there could be data security and privacy concerns and the legal service department may ask you to keep your data within the local storage since there might be customers uh, PIA info in your data. Moreover, in some scenarios, the bandwidth of your internet is low or only supports, you know, intermittent connections, which means that the latency by calling the cloud services might be unbearable. So with Microsoft Cognitive Services as containers, all the listed points could be sold and it offers uh, so many benefits to the customers as well as the developers. With any of these containers, all the data is at your edge, uh, so you could control over it. And the security and the privacy concerns are also clear, so you could meet every regulatory and uh, compliant requirement. So Azure Cognitive Services in containers enable the first and third party customers to deploy Cognitive Services to cluster or any containerized environment in their own subscription as well as you know on-prem and run it in their own context. So Cognitive Services uh, provides the following capabilities. Uh, first is around uniformity, right? So we defined a set uh, we define a set of standardized language natural protocols and the best practices for uh, logging, security, telemetry, and versioning across all cognitive services. Second one is around reusability. So we define a set of uh, common based Docker images to be used across all services. Third is around composition. So one way to enable better code reuse is to refactor the common patterns themselves into an internal or package that can be reused or shared between multiple cognitive services. The fourth is around inner loop, which means the application developers can easily evaluate our services on their development environments using the standard Docker commands and integrate with any of the development processes or application and manage them either locally or in the cloud using something like Azure Kubernetes service or debug using Azure Dev Spaces. And the final one is the support for Windows and Linux containers. So you can run your workloads in any environment to enable portable architecture and application nat nativity. Containers are available in both forms of Linux as well as, you know, uh, Windows containers. Uh, this particular diagram depicts how you could build your application and then how you could uh, containerize your model, put it in a container registry such as Docker Hub or Azure Container Registry, and then you can expose that as an API to your end customers who would be consuming from different devices such as mobile, or you can uh, expose that to the third-party developers to uh, consume in the form of APIs. So using cognitive service containers in your applications can be easily as the above steps denotes. Uh, you just need to have the container registry access, which can be accessed publicly for the containers, which are generally available by Microsoft, which I will be showing in the demo. And then you need to download the image to your local environment or wherever you want to run this particular container image. Third step is to deploy the image with Azure Container Instances uh, or if you are an organization with uh, large use cases where you have uh, millions of users, if you want to distribute the you know, workload, then you can use container orchestrator such as Kubernetes to deploy, uh, or you can use even Azure Stack on-prem. And finally, you need to register your container on cloud for the billing purposes. So these are the four simple steps, starting from building to containerizing it and then publishing it as an image and then orchestrate it using AKS or you can uh, run it as an isolated container using container instances. You talk about billing, it is self-contained within each container instances. So usage report will get submitted every 15 minutes to the billing endpoint. And then container will submit the usage data in the form of single HTTP request every 15 minutes and the data will be compressed to uh, request, uh, you know, uh, the data will be compressed to require a little bandwidth as possible. If for any reason container not reporting the uh, billing data to the billing API, 
it will fail within a given period of time then it can stop serving the request right let's look at a demo on how you could simply infuse sentimental analysis within your application using cognitive service and then deploy to azure kubernetes cluster in order to scale that uh, particular deployment across distributed users or, or geo-replicated application in this demo i am going to show how you can take microsoft uh, machine learning technology and incorporate into your application uh, running on kubernetes uh, so that you can empower your business application with ai without having to hire a team of data scientists and try to build these models by yourself all these services are offered by cognitive services which are available as containers so you can easily integrate microsoft uh, research which we have been doing for a long time I hope everyone knows about sentimental analysis. It's a process of determining whether a piece of writing is uh, positive, negative, or neutral. In this demo, I will be deploying a model to AKS cluster and use the same container in my application to perform some text analysis. Let's go ahead and uh, check out the demo. For this demo, these are the prerequisites and I have the demo enabled in this particular repository, which you could go and explore. You need a free Azure subscription, which you can register and get a free subscription. And then you need a Visual Studio or Visual Studio code. And finally, you need to have the Docker installed in your desktop. Uh, you can download from the Docker desktop uh, from the search, any of the search engine. And then you also need to have the Kubernetes extension VS Code. And if you're familiar with CLI commands, you don't need the extension on VS Code. With that, let me navigate to Azure portal. So in this scenario, we need two resources to be get started. First, let me create a resource group. Let me name the resource group as SLMCT submit. And I will choose the location as Southeast Asia because that is the nearest region or that has the low latency compared to the South India. So I have created the resource group and let me go ahead and create the first resource, which is the Azure Kubernetes cluster. So you can do a search here and then install the cluster using Kubernetes service. I'm going to put some default configurations. I will choose the same resource group and I keep the name as same, just to make the demo easy uh, and choose the region as Southeast Asia and I will have the default version 1.18.14 and then I will make the node pools as two in this case we don't need uh, you know high resources I will keep the node pools as two with the standard DS2 series and the rest is simple you just have to go ahead and click next next and they will have the managed identity integrated so that it's easier for you to you know have the authentication and the authorization in place once the validation is successful just go ahead and create it might take a couple of minutes to create i will skip that part in this demo as you could see the kubernetes cluster is right now deployed let me go ahead and create another resource under the particular resource group uh, which is the cognitive service you can just click on add and then search for cognitive service and then create be sure that this is not to consume this particular api this is for the matter of having the billing enabled for your uh, container since you are running it in your local machine or in a kubernetes environment so i will go ahead and create southeast asia here and then you can put the same name SLMCT submit. And let me choose the pricing tire as the standard one uh, since it's a demo application. Once you have that, you can go ahead and click on create. It might take a couple of seconds to get created.
all right as you could see the resources created right now we have both the resources uh, got created right one is the a case cluster to deploy your containerized models the second one is the the second one is the cognitive service let me try to open visual studio code and try to create a file name sentiment yml which we will leverage to deploy this particular uh, model to the AKS cluster, right? I assume you are familiar with uh, YAML files to create the deployments. So in this case, I have a simple YAML file. I have this uh, comments as well, which you could go through and explore. So I have a simple deployment where you could see the name is uh, sentiment and the application name is sentiment app. Uh, so I am leveraging the existing container, which is available in this particular container registry just named as text analytics and then I'm leveraging the cognitive service which I have created uh, in the Azure portal just for the fact that we are we will be sending those API requests every 15 minutes just to make sure that the billing is happening and then you can see the resource request so I would recommend to have at least 2 GB uh, reserved for running custom models in your AKS cluster and finally you will have the internal cluster ip defined using the load balancer where the external users will be able to access this particular endpoint using the port 5, uh, 5000 you can obtain this value for the billing as well as the value for the api key from the azure portal when you navigate to your cognitive service when you navigate to keys and endpoint this is where you need to get the endpoint as well as the API key. So I just need to make sure that key uh, API key is valid. Let me copy that and paste it here. It looks right. So let me go ahead and deploy this particular uh, model to the Kubernetes cluster. You could do this in two ways. If you're familiar with a cell script or PowerShell commands, you can just explore these commands uh, to communicate with Kubernetes cluster. But as I mentioned, if you have the um, Kubernetes extension installed using the VS code, you will be able to simply connect your Kubernetes cluster through this particular extension. Let me navigate, uh, let me refresh and see if it's getting reflected. So you just need to click on merge into, you know, um, kubeconfig. Once you have that merged, you will be able to explore uh, your configuration on the AKS cluster. You, so you will see all the nodes, all the namespaces, all the workloads that you're running on this particular cluster. You could simply deploy this particular model using this command kubectl and then apply the file name. So in this name, sentimentml. You could see that deployments are getting created and also the service is created. As you could see, the deployment was successful. Let me go ahead and see if we have the deployments correctly deployed. Um, if I go to workloads, you can see that it's, run, it's up and running. And then if I go to ports, I can see that particular container is running with the port name sentiment, right? So let me run and see kubectl get services. It should uh, display an yeah, external endpoint like this. Let me navigate to the URL and see if we could access the particular endpoint with the port 5000. Yeah, it's successful. It's up and running. And if you want to see uh, the endpoint, you can go to the Swagger endpoint and see what are the you know uh, endpoints available or what are the methods available. And you can give this URL to the end developers. Let me try to add this particular custom model uh, endpoint to an application. So I have this uh, kiosk key application in my local environment where you will be able to install uh, and also consume the demo, which is readily available for you to explore on different APIs that I talked about, right? So in this case, I'm going to leverage the text analytics 
and I will choose a custom endpoint which I have deployed locally. So I will use this particular endpoint. So I just have to remove the HTTP part. And if I go to the existing demo gallery and see for something like a sentiment. And if I go to Bing News Analytics and do a search for work from home, you can see that all the related news are appearing and then you can see the sentiment where 13 percentage of the people are not happy with work from home experience and then 87 percentage is very happy with that right that's all i wanted to show for the demo so you could see how easy it is to configure uh, you know uh, existing cognitive service as a container and then deploy to kubernetes cluster so you can build your custom uh, models as a container and then you can orchestrate using uh, Kubernetes. With that, I hope you got an understanding about how you could build a custom model or use an existing cognitive service as containers and infuse the AI capability to your application using something like AKS or container instances. These are some of the references that you could uh, leverage to get more information about cognitive services and containers. I hope you enjoyed the session and feel free to reach out to me using the social handles which are displayed there and have a good rest of the day and enjoy the upcoming sessions. Stay safe. Thank you.